Ah. Okay. When you meet someone or you're talking to somebody or you're in a conversation with someone, how do they let you know that they're interested in what you have to say? They smile at you. And let's say you're an entrepreneur and you have an idea and you're pitching it to an investor. How do you know that the investor isn't into your idea halfway through the pitch? What does his body language say? I'm not into it. And how does he do it? He crosses his arms or she crosses her arms. Now, when you see someone like this guy, someone that doesn't like you, somebody's angry with you, you know it because they show it in their face. These are the simple body language things that we all know. Now, who tells us these things? They're simple. They seem like we all know them. But who tells us what these are? Who's your advisor on this? Well, today, I'm going to give you some information that's going to change every interaction you have with every person you come in contact with from this day forward for the rest of your life. <laughs> now, if you share this information with your friends and your family and the people you love the most, then maybe today we in this room can change the world just a little bit for the better. So you ready? Here we go. Now over here, we have everything the average person thinks they know about body language. Over here, we have everything that research and science tells us about body language, the facts. Now, over here, we have everything the average person thinks they know. 87% of this information is incorrect. Science and research, 100% correct, the facts. Now, when these two things come together, they crash into each other, and they cause uh, miscommunications and misunderstandings with all kinds of people. And it can happen to you, and I'm sure it does at work, or at home, at church, or even when you're sitting in an audience. So when that happens, it could be really a big problem personally. And in some cases, depending on the situation, it can be a huge problem globally. Let's say you've got a couple of uh, world leaders in the same room and they're talking. And one of them makes two or three bad decisions about the other one's body language. That can be a huge problem for all of us. Now, in the last three months, two and a half, three months, the United States has spent over a million dollars on Putin's body language, trying to decide what he's thinking, and what he's going to do next, especially with this Crimea situation going on. Now, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. And that says every bit of, of information about body language that you are exposed to should be true. Everything that you learn and take and use as tools for yourself, that stuff's got to be correct, or there'll be problems. Now, who do you get your information from? Who's the um, advisor you use for your body language? Every person in this room has created their very own body language Frankenstein. Mm. But, you know, so how, what is that? The body language Frankenstein is an imperfect advisor inadvertently created by an incomplete understanding of body language. So in other words, it's somebody you've got telling you about body language, they really don't know what they're talking about much about it. So how did you create this? Well, let's say you go to a meeting and you see somebody crossing their arms. Well, you saw on TV or you heard somebody say, I know what that means. They're not into what I'm saying. Their arms are crossed. They're closed off to what I have to say. They don't, they, they're not into it. Okay, well, that's not true. Every time you see that, it could be uh, somebody, it could, they could be cold. They could be fat like me, just like enjoy. It's easy to put your arms up here and say, oh, you know, relax. So it doesn't mean that for everybody every time. So you take those little arms off and you put them up here on your body language. Frankenstein now he has arms. And you see somebody standing like this. And people that stand like this usually are law enforcement. You see police officers standing this way and people in the military standing this way. This is called legs akimbo. Now, that keeps them on balance. All You'll see martial arts people do that as well because you can jump on them and they're pretty much on balance the whole time. And that's what I do. Plus, it gives them the effect that, you know, I'm in charge and in control. So your brain, sir, your body language, Frankenstein says, or part of your brain says, I see somebody standing like that. I know what that means. And it doesn't mean that. Maybe somebody's just confident. Maybe that's just the way they stand. It doesn't mean they're being aggressive. It doesn't mean they're mean. So now you've got a pair of legs for your body language, Frankenstein. Then let's say you ask somebody a question, and we know they look down to the left before they answer, they're lying. Because we saw it on TV, we saw it in that movie. 
because they're accessing a part of their brain that says, that helps them create a story and lie to you. But that's not true. What if you're left-handed? Are you going to look down to the right? Maybe. When people are asked a question, yeah, they'll look around. If you're asked about colors, usually you'll look, it up, you'll look up into the left a little bit. If you're asked about sound, you'll look up into the right a bit a little bit. Usually. That's most people, but not everybody. There are no absolutes in this. So you think you know what's happening, so you've got a pair of eyes that go with your body language Frankenstein. Now, once you start collecting all this information and you get enough about it, you get a brain and a mouth. So once you get that, it's still all this information that you've gathered, little bits and pieces and parts of body language, this thing starts telling you what it thinks <laughs> is going on. And most of it, some of it's partially true, but not all of it's really, you know, completely 100% true. So once this happens, you've created a monster <laughs> of your own. He sits right in here all day long. Hey, man, guess what? He does that to your friends and your family and your loved ones, the people you work with. And we all know when you create a monster, you can't have a monster without some angry villagers. <laughs> now, your villagers are the people that are in your life. Again, the people you love, the people you hang out with, your family, your friends. And the ones that are the angry ones, the upset ones, are the ones you've, you've made these bad decisions about because of body language, because of your body language Frankenstein. Now, let's talk about this girl's picture again. Your body language Frankenstein told you she was glad to see her, she was, she was happy, and she was smiling. She is. But check this out. Back in the late 1800s, there was a guy named Duchesne de Bologna, French fella, and his study in science was for uh, facial expressions and and what the face looked like when you're happy, sad. And he specialized in, or found out about, um, specific things that told you when someone's smiling for real or if it was a fake smile. So they found out that the fake smile was the one that looks, you know, the say cheese, you know, somebody says say cheese, you're like, huh. you've seen it from every 14 to 17 year old, 17 year old kid on vacation, just, you know, at the beach. So that's, their, that's what that looks like. Now, the real one, you see, it, you see someone smile a real smile when they're happy, when they've been told some good news, or they've heard something funny. Now, check out these two girls. The one on the right is the one you saw in the picture. And she's smiling, the say cheese smile. And her sister is smiling a real smile. She actually said something funny to her sister. They were, they were told to look at the camera and smile. And the little girl says something to her sister, they're twins. And the other one thinks it's funny, and she keeps smiling. Now, we know this because Duchesne found out that when you smile, the little muscles around the eyes, when they close like this, they do something different at the very edges when they wrinkle. Now, a real smile is going to go all the way up, and it's going to wrinkle from the outside in like this. When you do a fake smile, your, your face is going to smile, it's going to push them up. So it's a very different look on your face. See the, the difference in the two girls there? It's dramatic. Now, also, Duchesne found that when you have a real smile, you smile really wide. And the reason being, for the fake smile, is you just kind of push your mouth up. And, huh, I'm going to take my pic cheese. You take your picture. But when you're really happy, these muscles here also pull on your, your face and your mouth, as well as push. And it makes the little corners of your mouth go up. So there's a dramatic difference in those two, if you can see the, two, the difference in the two. So let's talk about this guy again. This guy, I took this picture, and it's a friend of mine, and we're watching somebody pitch. And as they're pitching, this guy crosses his arms about halfway through the pitch. And it's not because he's not into the idea, he loved the idea, but it's because it was cold in there. And this guy's watching, and he thinks he's not into the pitch. Now, one thing it tells you that not only is it cold in there, but he was really into it, is his arms are really, really tight. Now, if they weren't really, really tight, then he would be not really that into it, because he just crosses his arms because he's bored, his head would be not looking straight ahead, not straight up, it would be at, a, at an angle, like this way, and then not like the listening angle, but back and to the right just a touch. And that means that he's a little bit bored. But his line of sight is right at the guy pitching and at the pitch screen. Now, if you remember nothing else but this little piece of information I'm going to give you, watch someone's feet. If I'm talking to you and, and my feet are pointed right at you, you got me. I'm listening, I'm like, yeah, tell me all about it. But if you're talking to someone and their feet are pointing toward the door, that's where their brain is. Wherever their feet are pointing is where your brain is pointing. So you've seen people in meetings or 
at the office at the, when the day's almost over, the meeting's almost over, and they'll be sitting like this, almost in the runner's position. <laughs> because that's where their brain is for the door. Now, where else do body language um, mistakes and, and the things that aren't true come from? I always get a little heat for this one. But it comes from body language experts and presentation coaches who really haven't done their, their research. They may even have a degree, but they haven't been doing their research for the past few years. And they'll see something on the internet and say, hey, this looks good to me, and we'll put it in the class. So the big one, the big, the telltale sign of that is called the rule of communication. The 73855 rule. And what that says is this, and it looks good because it's got a chart. So your body language Frankenstein goes, this is great. But remember, this is not true. Everybody thinks this is, I've heard people walk away from this and say, oh, I didn't know our communication was 7% when we of talking. Communication fully, they say, is 7% of it is the words you use, 38% of it is the tone of voice you use, and 55% of it is the body language you use. And when you hear that at first, it does make sense. You go, hmm. It's a chart. It does look scientific. And again, your, your body language Frankenstein goes, looks good to me, man. You should do this. You know, we're, we're down. But that's not true. Because if it were true, that would mean 93% of communication was your body language. And I could say, let's say, hey. And I just said, hey. Why don't you come up here, and I'll cut your head off, and then I'm going to buy us all lunch, and it's all on me. That sound good to you? So, it could be a good show. Stick around. So, I kept hearing this one guy's name connected with this, Albert Morabian. This was years ago. So, I called him up. He was the uh, professor at UCLA at the time, psychology. And I said, hey, I said, what's this, this body language thing with the person? He said, listen, they've got it wrong. They're not doing it right. What they've come up with, I did two studies, and the percentages that you put together at the end of the two studies, they've combined those and come up with this number. And it's wrong. It has nothing to do with body language. His studies had to do with the voice and the face and the tone of voice. It's a long story. We should Google it. It's a great thing, but I, I can't give it all to you right now. So anyway, th that information is wrong in, that, in the 73855 rule. So don't forget that. When somebody comes on like, this is true, here's the way it is. If they're like, um, again, a body language coach or presentation coach, they're not lying to you, they just haven't done their research. Speaking of liars, who's the most famous liar of all time? It's not Clinton. It's not OJ. It's not Nixon. It's not Hitler. I was shocked to the core when I found out that it wasn't my ex-wife. <laughs> it's not my ex-wife. I'm only kidding. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. So who's the most famous liar of all time? This man. Because we knew, or his village knew, when he lied, his nose grew. But they didn't know it until somebody else in the village told them what was going on. Hey, man, uh, you see that wooden kid? The kid made out of wood with the red pants and little hipster hat? When he lies, nose grows. Hand to God. <laughs> what? You told me? That little cricket? <laughs> oh, yeah. So we didn't know what that was until so they didn't know it. These villagers didn't know what that was until somebody told them. And the same thing with this man. Let's go back and, and let's talk about what your body language Frankenstein told you about him. It said, This guy is angry. You know, don't get around him. He's, he's mad. He's not. This guy's this close to crying. If you look right here, that's called the grief muscle. And it makes a little upside down horseshoe. And when that happens, it usually happens with, with women when they've lost a child, or if a mate who's been with somebody a very long time, they lose their mate. Or if you lose a pet and it's been with you for a really long time, you'll see that as well. Sometimes you'll see if someone's been shot or if they're in a car wreck, and they're in a lot of pain. But mostly you see it when someone's grieving. So he told you wrong on that one. 
So there are three great examples of your body language Frankenstein telling you something that you think is true, it thinks is true, when in reality it has nothing to do with what's actually going on. So how do you kill your body language Frankenstein? You stop listening to him. It's that simple. And you realize that body language has is many pieces in that puzzle. There's not just one piece of that puzzle that says, this is a fact. This happens, to, everybody does this, they cross their arms every time they're, they're, they want to distance themselves from you. Every time they're lying to you, they scratch their nose. There is no absolute in body language. So to really understand someone and to, to really communicate with somebody and listen to them communicating to you, the key is you listen with your ears, but you listen with your eyes, and you listen with your gut, and you listen with your heart. You listen to the big picture. So if you do that, maybe you'll inspire your villagers, and they'll do that, and they'll inspire their villagers, and they'll do that, and they'll inspire their villagers, which would mean that today we started Change the World, just a little bit, right here. Thank you.